So we've previously looked at how we can use a variable to store some text um, and we can also use a variable to store a single letter for example that's called a character. You might also be aware that all of the different types of information inside the computer are basically stored as numbers. So obviously numbers uh, themselves are stored as binary but everything else we think of as being stored as a number so sound for example stored as the amplitude of, of the waveform at each point in time and uh, bitmaps are stored as the amount of red, green and blue making up each pixel and text is stored um, usually on a PC using something called an ASCII code. So they do start at zero but the first character you'll see on the screen uh, is 32 which is a space and then so um, the symbol is in this column here so if we go further down we've got some punctuation marks, we've got some digits starting at 48 and then we've got a bit more punctuation and then the capital letters begin at 65 and and then the lowercase letters begin at 97 because they're all stored separately so up to 128 that's kind of your standard um, character sets and then above 128 up to 255 you, you get things like country specific things accented letters um, uh, currency symbols etc so how is that idea useful and how it, can it be used in our programming. Well there are two commands in Python that enable you to convert a single character into its ASCII code and then um, to convert it back again. So the uh, keyword to convert a letter into its ASCII code is ORD. So ORD A will turn our A into a 65 because we said that the, six, the symbol um, a is represented by the character 65 and it'll take into account things like case so the character code for uh, a small a is uh, 97 and then we can use chr to convert it back again so chr 65 literally just as the opposite turns the 65 back into an a and uh, chr uh, 97 will turn uh, that back into a lowercase a so just the two commands there. How is that? How is that useful? Well, there's all sorts of things we might want to do with text other than just displaying it. So one thing we might want to do, uh, if we're looking at encryption, you might have looked at C's as shift ciphers. That's the idea where you move things along the uh, alphabet. So what we could do is, um, well, don't forget we can loop through some text. So uh, we could have uh, we can have text equals um, input. Uh, give me a sentence okay so we're going to take some uh, our plain text if you like uh, and we're going to encrypt it we'll see how to do that so if we have for char in text so what that will do is that we'll use the uh, variable char and that will become each character in the string text in turn and just to begin with what we'll do is we'll just to check it's working correctly uh, we'll print the character and we'll also print the ASCII code of the character. So when you're testing a program you don't always need to uh, write the whole thing before you check that it works. Just do it a little bit at a time, particularly with structures like loops, make sure it's counting enough, uh, those kind of things. Make sure it's doing what you expect before you uh, add any extra calculation. So that seems to be doing what we wanted. It's, it's taken my input, hello, it's broken it down a letter at a time and it's looked up the corresponding um, ASCII code. So what about um, if I want to shift that along the alphabet? So I'm not going to use any validation here but I'm just going to say shift equals int um, how many places to shift. So I'm going to ask the user um, how many places and actually that's um, I want to actually input that don't I? So I've missed out the crucial part there and then I'm going to cast that to an integer. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ASCII code and then I'm going to add the shift to it. So again, I'm just going to um, put this in here. So this isn't my finished program, so I'm not wasting um, kind of processor time by converting that twice, but I'm just going to, as a temporary measure, show you what that does. So I'm going to, to each of those ASCII codes, I'm going to add the number of places we want to shift. So I'm going to say hello and I'm going to shift it one place. So 
instead of 104, I'm going to use 105. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to convert that back into some text. So I'm going to use chr for that. And I can use copy and paste. So I just want that. That that is the value that I'm going to turn back into my um, character. So give me a sentence. How many places? Shift one. So H will become I. E becomes F. Um, etc. L becomes M and so does the other um, M. So now that's we can see that that's doing the right thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, tidy that up a bit. So instead of printing it a letter at a time, I'm going to create a variable for output. And what I'm going to do is instead of printing the output, I'm going to um, add that character to my output string. There we go. And so that should, rather than printing them out, just add them to the string. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to print it out. So let's try that then. So hello. Uh, shift it one place. And that becomes IFMMP. So that's a very crude uh, Caesar shift uh, cipher program. Um, what else could we do? Well, what, what, let's just, have, uh, just, just, just say one more thing about this. Um, if I run my program now, obviously if I say ABC and shift it one place, that will become BCD. But if I run it again, if I say X, XYZ and I shift that one place, what's going to happen? It's going to go off the end of the alphabet. So this is a good place to use your modular arithmetic uh, technique that you, you learnt in the previous video and to get that to uh, wrap around again. So, or you could have a look at my Caesar shift example. Okay, so um, that's one example of something for something you could do. You could do a similar thing um, with uh, maybe a phonetic alphabet and uh, a tuple. So you could say, no, I'm not going to type in the whole, oops, whole alphabet. Um, but if I just do the first three, then you'll get the idea. Um, so I'm going to say, if I can type properly. Uh, Alpha, um, Bravo, Charlie. Now, if you're not sure what the phonetic alphabet is, then uh, you can find it in Wikipedia, etc. So, uh, what is your name? So, let's just this is a bit of text. And so, what we're going to do now is um, we could use that. So, we could. take each letter. Now what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to convert that into uppercase and you'll see why in a minute. So by converting it to uppercase we're effectively fixing the range of the letter to be 65 upwards. If we didn't know about the case, if it was a mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters, um, we'd have some from 65 upwards and some from 97 upwards and it'll get a bit tricky. Um, so now I know the range of these numbers. So I'm going to um, look through here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to again uh, take the ASCII code of that character and then I'm going to take that uh, so and subtract 65 so if I've got an A, it shifts it down to be a 0, and B will be 1, and C will be 2, etc. And then I'm going to use that as um, the index into the letter tuple. So I'm going to say letter, and then use the um, 65 less than the ASCII code of the letter as the, um, as the index, and then I'm going to uh, print that. So when I run this now, obviously I'm only limited to A, B, and C. Um, but if I type in A, B, and C, it'll tell me. Um, no, it won't, because uh, it's not text; is it? Is name? There we go. Um, it's going to tell me how to spell my name. So if I had the full um, alphabet there, um, it would work for 
any uh, any name obviously I might need to validate that to make sure there's no punctuation or other things in there but that's another example of why knowing the ASCII code of some text in your program uh, might be useful because we can manipulate it shift it encrypt it we could do other uh, fancier encryptions so we can use other numerical techniques we can use um, modular arithmetic or bitwise and um, or other bitwise operations bitwise bitwise exclusive or would give us something like the um, Lorenz cipher that the Germans used in the Second World War or in this case we could use the ASCII code uh, as a lookup to uh, represent uh, something else so we could have a symbol or in this case a word